So now we are sliding into um, the unfortunate set of events that this class has been building up to, which is the actual official U.S. Civil War. And what I'm going to do <clears throat> is, um, you know, you're, you're going to look at the textbook, which would help fill in some gaps. And I'm going to really just highlight a few things um, that I think are pivotal, okay? So, I, I, I mean, one could argue that you could really have an entire class just on the Civil War alone and all of the backdrops and all the battles. And as I, I think you know with my approach, just like with the Revolutionary War, I don't do a lot of battle history, um, which is not irrelevant. It's just, it's my choice. Um, I feel like there's a lot of that kind of history channel thing, that kind of football player like approach to like looking at wars. Like there was this battle here at this place and this one amazing, you know, turn of events and, and this group hits this one and blah, blah, blah. And I think for people who understand war history very well and also maybe are in the military or into sports, that can be very uh, um exciting or very interesting or very helpful for them maybe understanding um you know strategies in terms of of, of uh, winning and victories and such uh, uh, events um but the problem that i always see happening is that the actual meat of the reasons for these uh, wars and conflicts are lost at the expense of actually studying these battles and then you know you have people who are either purely bored or they're uh, really into it. What I want you to see is that um, this is the, the 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 one important war that Americans fought over and that we killed each other over and it wasn't that long ago and um, we haven't fully resolved this legacy yet, have we? Um, so um, as we approach this um, I just um, I want you to kind of just soak in all this information that you had, and then we're going to look at some other lectures that I'm going to post to really kind of clarify what to make of this legacy. Okay, so I'm going to go just straight into the election of Lincoln. Um, Abraham Lincoln was picked by the Republican Party for his uh, good reputation and his obscurity. He wasn't a major man on, on the scene, and... Um, you know, in the election, um, the electoral vote, he had, uh, 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 you know, about 180, about about 80, about 40%. Um, he was running against a Southern Democrat who had about 18%. And then there was another party, Constitutional Union, uh, 12, a little over 12, and then <clears throat> a Northern Democrat, uh, Stephen Douglas. Okay. Now, um, something that I, I kind of want to talk about before this, Abraham Lincoln, um, in how much against slavery was he? How, how, what was his view of, of blacks? First of all, I think you could argue that he was an evolving character. Um, I feel like I haven't fully resolved what I think about this myself because I did a lot of research on this, especially as the, um, the debate again over the Confederate flag was uh, um, starting to come about again in modern times. And um, I was having people throw these like quotes from uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln on the Facebook and the internet that showed him to be um, not as anti-slavery and, and anti-racist um, as people like to have him out to be. and there is this kind of common belief that he never really cared about blacks, but just pres preserving the union. I think that there's some truth to that, but I do think there's also uh, um, a, a missing the point. People do evolve over time and positions evolve. And um, people can be opportunistic as well. I don't think he was. And I think the important part to realize is that the, even though he was in his obscurity, Abraham Lincoln was seen as but from the slave uh, owner's point of view, as anti-slavery. This was the problem they really had with him and uh, um, the Republican Party in general, which is the election of Lincoln in 1860 was seen 
as a foreboding uh, event as far as the southerners were concerned okay and so <clears throat> that's really what we need to kind of like kind of let sink in um and so just to give you an example okay right at his victory this is seen as a final blow to many southerners and the union falls apart right like after his election okay i mean literally within weeks after his election there is disunion and um south carolina uh, uh seceded in december 20 1860 they weren't even waiting for christmas man you know okay uh by the time uh, um that he would actually take office mississippi okay in january 1861 then uh, on the 9th a day later in florida uh, january 10th alabama january 11th georgia january 19th louisiana the 26th and then texas uh february 1st okay and in february the new nation of the confederate states of america was formed okay this was all from the election of uh lincoln he didn't even have a chance to make any policy okay and um you know buchanan was in office before him president buchanan um who uh, essentially didn't feel that slavery was something that that should be a um, he didn't feel that 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 really he, he felt that the, the Constitution allowed for them to have slaves uh, in the South and he didn't um, seem to feel that it was um, uh, uh, he didn't take a strong position on a lot of the things taking place it's the presence of Lincoln that really shook things up i mean just him coming in okay so that's what i want to kind of remind you and so then you know the question of course goes to well why would they do that okay right and um it's fundamentally uh, um t linked to this fear of the you know seeing the handwriting on the wall as the saying goes for for the end of slavery with um, um his nomination and, and election okay so we have Fort Sumner and Fort uh, Pickens. So in Fort Sumner, a federal military uh, installation on the island in the harbor of uh, uh, Charleston, uh, South Carolina. And then Fort Pickens is in the harbor in Florida. Um, President Buchanan was refusing to yield at the time. Okay, so I mean, remember, like, this is happening while he's still president. Okay, we kind of forget that. Like, <laughs> um, Lincoln gets elected and Buchanan's now like kind of like, whoa, now I got people leaving, you know. Um, and then in January, um, he sent unarmed merchant ships with supplies and troops and it was shot at and it turned back. OK, so here we're really, you know, the, 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 the heat gets uh, going. OK, and so uh, I'm actually going to start stop there and then we will return to uh, Lincoln's inaugural address and like well, and, and see what's um, going to develop really rapidly.